the semi AP semi tank does go for the conqueror so he's gonna be very good in his skirmishes and Mumu he's very good at clearing his jungle especially when there's multiple you know uh, little creeps hitting him as he gets the tantrum of cooldown as fast as possible I mean I'm surprised I know the name of that ability because I've never played this champ in my life but, what is <laughs> but we do see Invade coming out of ground zero so they want to really abuse the fact they have two hooks level oh. one if they want well, they don't have any hooks now because Karak's hit the wall. Not very happy with that one. Spotted a lonely Violet and then very quickly said, all right, well, I'll let you get away on this occasion. You can see the rest of uh, Bliss very fanned out at Adoric. As he got the jump, they'll look towards Fido, but the rest of the ganking squad from Grand Zero is there to back him up. And we might be denied a cheeky first blood again in, in the first few minutes. I wonder what Ground Zero are thinking about. Do they want a late invade? Is this Ward just spotting out where Kevy starts so there's not so much volatility in the early game? I assume Schoenfei just wants to play for his clear. He wants to play for that, uh, the, how fast he can clear the jungle. Not so, you know, good in the 1v1, but, you know, having those two banish tosses means he has some gank threat in early game. So if these lanes do become volatile, he can really punish that. I'm curious about these matchups. Uh, not very often we get to talk about, or let alone see, a Nasus and a Zac going up against one another. I'd imagine both of them would have fairly good sustain to get through this one. And, much like uh, a lot of these top lane, it should just be a little bit of like trading. <laughs> it's uh, I think the fact that like Tien has said, all right, this is what happens when you guys ban Camille. I'm playing, you know, one of the strongest laners you find in the 2v2 sense. It's just that you're susceptible to getting hit by the CC when you dash forward. So Vart always has to be conscious about he's not completely unlocked in this game because he needs to be, he needs to worry about the Hawk and the, the depth charge coming out of Kurak. It's just a nice, uh, you know, tool to lock down this very mobile champions in Lucian. Oh, Lucian and Senna back in the bot lane together. Only now missing the fresh right to go completely lore accurate, but uh, fresh will no doubt be sitting on the sidelines crying, seeing the likes of uh, Leona and uh, Nautilus being picked over him instead. But let's keep our eyes on the bot lane because I imagine that's where a lot of this aggression is going to stem from. Mid lane, yes, it's changed a fair bit with reworks and differences as to how those champions function compared to what they've been like in the past. And no doubt we'll be quite interested in that one too, but I think a lot of viewers at home are going to be wanting to see how does the Mumu and Nasus fare, where they go, and what they can get accomplished, and see, is this a spiciness, or would they even quit it as cheese that gets them the win here? Yeah, I'm also curious to how this Mumu really functions early game. We see Harry also going for the grass, so maybe this means he's going to go for that tankier build. There's a lot of AoE coming out of the Ground Zero side, so being that squishy champion maybe isn't the best idea, but this is usually how the interaction works in the trades. We see, you know, Lucian dash forward, tries to get the first strike prop to make as much money as possible. Very easy for Nola to pull out that hook. Lemus decided to go for the fleet footwork this game instead of the uh, first strike that he had in last game, so won't be able to match the same income that he had last game, but just much safer in lane due to, you know, falling down for that first blood like last time. Absolutely, and obviously there's going to be a lot more harass in this lane, um, given that it's going to be enchanted there to try and bolster up the, the Lucian to be an absolute weapon. As we do keep our eyes on Kevy, currently has the double buff, he's working his way towards that one scuttle crab. You mentioned last game he managed to get all two. No longer the Exodia as it once was, but it's going to be a different objective here for Schoenfire. He's already gone back for his first base, already picked up the boots in an amp tome to Amplify is clear and his ability to rotate first. And they're actually going to butt heads here in the mid lane as they look to try and find out Harry. Kevy says, well, fighters are extended. I'm no longer interested, uh -oh. but certainly Schoenfire is. There is the bandage toss. There is the follow-up. Second charge confirms it. And there's first blood. Yeah, that's the strength of the double bandage. And <laughs> does a lot of damage, especially with, you know, having that double lockdown. Fighter lays out the red carpet on top of Kevy and he falls down for first blood. Easy as that. I think it was really nice by Schoenfire to, you know, go for the base because he doesn't really care about getting that first crab. He knows, you know, the map is split based on having the ward on the blue buff level one. So they know where Kevy is. He doesn't think the crab is contested, so he can go for the early base and find a really nice amplifying turn to win that fight. Near two man center route. That is to be denied though, is that Lazora expends the last bit of his mana to get a little bit of extra healing out to try and sustain through the punishment. And you can see now that Grenzer's bot lane is building up a pretty sizable wave here. That cannon is hanging on for dear life, but it will still be crashing all the same. And uh, without any jungle threat, surely nothing too crazy would have happened here, but Lemus can continue to be a menace either chipping away at the turret or poking from afar. Yeah, fortunately for Bliss bot lane, there is no dive out of Schoenfire this time, but there is aggression happening in this mid-jungle, and this is thanks to Corky just being the spit from in the early game. Still going for the Emax this time, but he is going for the Phage. I think it's completely fine to max E still. It's just, I think the build should always lean towards the scaling side, which is going to be the Triforce. You, you take a bit longer to come online, but when you do come online, you really, really take over the game. 
Repeat gank here in the mid lane, looking at it and says, all right, Harry, burn your flesh. Hang on a minute. I still had that second charge of the bandage toss, but my job here is done. You've burnt double summoners. And we've given a lot of control across to Fido. So I can look elsewhere right now. And that must be a little bit frustrating for Harry, right? He has opted for the grasp, as you highlighted very early on. He's wanting to become that much more of a tank, but needs so much more time before that Amumu, you can simply just, you know, shrug off. Yeah, we see Fido just once again, always going to be pushing the wave. The one thing to note though, we look at this top lane, I think that Fire just has the edge onto Tien right now. You would think that Nasus is just going to throw down the Spirit Fire, you know, hit six creeps, just constantly get parity, but Fire is doing a really good job to just always punish him. He doesn't have cooldowns, he's trading aggressively, and I think this really swings like what Ground Zero wanted to do in the early game, and they just don't have the same strength. We see Lemus already going for his classic center room, trying to impact the game, but just look at the wave play that Nasus has to you. Too strong, isn't it? As you say, drops the Spirit Fire and those early stacks, the base damage alone is just so, so strong to get you across in these uh, weak early stages. Already with the Oblivion Orb, gonna find incredible value into that of the Zach. Hold up. The passive up and available, Shots. but he's managed to find aggro into Lemus, and he'll get the kill. The classic Cinerome, usually <laughs> so, so good with it. On this occasion, not to be a second occasion of somebody getting baited under the tower, but the luxury for Violet is he can cleanse. Yeah, Bio Daddy, really, really nice pickup. I was going to say how cool it is for Senna when you have double tank side laners that you can just go lane with either one you want based on what your team is doing. So he's going to go top lane with these uh, Nasus and just, you know, get some gold hitting the turret, get some souls from these stacked mini wave. But Bio just jumps on him, slams into the turret. There's two tower shots with Crucial, you know, in that CC chain, he finds himself an easy kill. And he certainly does. Very nice uh, turn of events for them. Let's see what happens here in this mid lane as he re establishes control of another lane apart from Bop. He's just going to continue to leave uh, Kurak on an island to farm up all that solo experience and fend for himself. He knows that Kurak is in a pretty good position to at least deal with Violet, who's going to want to hunt for those 2v1, uh, you know, occasions. But I suppose something to consider, um, which we always joke about, right, is that, you know, Wither is incredibly annoying, and especially when we talk about, like, Nidley having this broken heal that late game is insane. Same could be said for the Wither, right? It's like a 75% slicing, and at max, it's like nearly 100%. It's crazy. It's just a stun, Skimmy. When you get to that, especially in this Nasus iteration, you, you, you max the E and then the W. So you have, at level 13, max points into the Wither, which means Harry, Violet, not doing any damage when they hit with it, you know, unless Violet uses the cleanse, but that means he doesn't have anything to deal with this Amuru. He's going to be diving onto him. And I think that's something else to touch on right now. The jungle gap keeps growing because how fast Shurnfire can clear the jungle. So I'm concerned for Kevy, who's not fighting these early ganks. He's not going to have the same power in these team fights. Skinny. No, he certainly isn't. He certainly isn't. We're used to a Zin being very aggressive, right? Finding a gank before level six and getting the getting the momentum started, whereas for Shurnfire, his bread and butter has been find an AP jungler, fast, clear, and just really take over the show. Right now, he's keeping up pace with these mid laners. He has the most farm in the game. It's uh, a scary prospect to uh, bear in mind because with double buff, already a two level lead. Now the shoe's on the other foot and kevy has got to endure what it was like for Schoenfire's uh, early, early game, game one. How scary is that? You see a wave being built into your turret and a level eight of Mumu rocks up. Schoenfire can absolutely dive this turret if he wants. He's already going in without his team. Violet doesn't have access to the cleanse, so we have to see if the rotation will be in time, Skimmy. It's too much damage to get through, right? He goes for the first banish off on the Violet, the second under Elodor at the curse. He's third he gets it done with a backup from the squad. Kevy. Primed and ready to go with that wind becomes lightning, but he's a madman if you were to take it. And with Harry threatening from the side, uh, you know, building all these MR items as a, a Varus and getting away with it by still doing a ton of damage. In jumps Harry, he deliberated for a little bit of time, hit the Empress Divide, and will die in the process. Can Team Bliss get anything back? They can salvage one and make it a one for one at the tail end of that fight there. But it is still Grand Zero that leads Supreme. Find the one for one, but they do get the flash out of Shonfire as well. But in the grand scheme of things, that was two kills going to a Grand Zero because they found Eldor earlier on the dive. Once again, you know, we look at top lane is going very well for Bio. Tien isn't really able to do what he needs to do here. But like, just look at how powerful this Moon is on the dive. Doesn't even blow all onto Violet initially because he thinks he still has the clan. But Eldor's just a sitting duck and the amount of damage that comes out of him, especially with the center ult follow up. This is what most team fights are going to look like skinny. I think so, yeah. That's uh, that's a scary proposition, right? When you're seeing just how uh, one-sided it was from just a one-member pick-off. But if we're fighting these crazy Baron Dragon objective fights where everybody's grouped up together, it's going to be much like those from the fans. But that's right, four five-man Amumarults 
I don't know if there's anything in the Nintendo I can do to try and turn it around. Yeah, and I think it's so cool that we get to see, you know, a champ who isn't meta have such a strong impact. There are a lot of champs who aren't played right now in the meta who are extremely strong. And the is probably one of them. He is going to be a champ who can really abuse health stackers, especially, you know, when we see those Warmogs meta come through. Leandry's rush from Mumu, who can act as a frontline but also burn down these tanks, is something that might come you know, into play, especially in Urs. This would be pretty brutal. I remember when uh, we had that uh, moment with the mythic items coming out and you could actually just do so much damage onto the Baron that it was just rushing it on down. Speaking of a little no bit of damage, though, it is Bio that's preying upon the vulnerability here of Kurak, who's Getting lower and lower by the second. Bio still has that passive, so he flash. most likely will look for the dive, but then topside, but it is peppering damage into Schoenfar. He finally gets that final auto with his passive to take down one. Tien diving underneath this turret, finds himself a double kill, and the dog is online. Yeah, he's not going for that AP build, but his ult is still doing so much AOE damage, just burning everyone down. He's going to go for that. A lot of, so much cooldown. We'll have to see how many points he has. He might be a Q Max Nasus, but I assume based on how fast we're screwing the wave, this is probably going to be an E Max, as we do see now when his uh, stats are brought up. So, a lot of harass coming out of this Nasus, but he's going to go for the tank build, just be a frontline for his team. And I think this is the identity that Ground Zero keep going for. It's all about, like, okay, let's pick this. Uh, they're scaling, lots of frontline, and just, you know, really win out these skirmishes because we have so much CC. So much CC, and I loved it when we saw Amumi first get this change for the, the two charges of oh, that Vanish Loss, right? Made him so viable for the supportive position. Hello! Uh, well, Aladoric's dead. They tried to go for a gank. They thought it was so safe. They saw nobody in mid lane, so surely that's a done deal. Little did they know that the entirety of Grand Zero were running together straight through mid. Yeah, they thought, Bliss thought they were the ones finding the pick onto Fido, but Fido has a Nautilus in his pocket, and when those hook lands, especially with the Amumu, with the Bandage Toss paired with that, it's always going to be a kill, Skimmy. Well, you talk about some of the champions that are incredibly proficient at taking down these objectives. Shurkin literally stands still and just have a bit of a cry inside that uh, grub pit and just pick up literally everything as easy as you like it. Plenty of souls then for Lemus to enjoy. And the show keeps going in their direction. Three kills so far. Their top side is simply untouchable at this point. And so much so that now really they are the top three performers. It really is Violet and Bio. We're going to try and bring them back into the mix of things. But uh, it's going to be a very much uphill task. Can we take stock of the game state right now, Skimmy. We see a lot of the lead is in the jungle position. The rest of the map is doing completely fine for Bliss. So it's all about how concerning will this jungle gap be as we see Tien using that ulti to really win out on this trade on Bio because the amount of HP percent damage this ult will do is just going to keep scaling. Especially if he does want to, you know, build up a Leandries or build up a Black Fire Torch. But if he does want to go for this tank, he's going to eventually get to the point where he can just start ignoring Bio. Kind of annoying right now because he's absolutely just jumped upon him, said, let's go and bounce again. I've seen these two key members. And Nasish, you will perish. You will die. I'll flash out that... Uh Bandage loss, but I won't have the luxury of dodging out that curse of the sad mummy. Here's my passive. Can you take it down? Because Kevy is here to back him up. And Lemus has to show respect and run away on this one. Yeah, Bio's doing a really, really good job. Every time Lemus shows up in Tien's lane, someone dies. So maybe Lemus should stay away from, you know, going top because he keeps throwing his top laner's lane a little bit. But two kills apiece to the top laner is a bit of a gold leak going to be in Bio's pocket because, you know, he is getting a lot more farm than Tien right now, or getting a lot more experience, I should say. And I think this could be the saving grace for the Bliss comp, is the fact that this Zac is going to be so strong and there's just not much damage coming out of the Grand Zero comp at this point in the game. Well, that's it. Um, and obviously having that really strong engage for it's going to really uh, look to alleviate some of the pressure that Kevy's feeling under so far, right? 0-3, oh not having the early game start that he hit last time, falling further and further behind, not only in kills, but also in that camp clear speed. You can see right now, down by just shy of 50 CS, so it doesn't feel good right now. You're thinking, well, what is our way back into the swamp? And they're going to say, well, we need to start stacking up these dragons, give ourselves at least some kind of scaling late game condition, so we have the power. No flash on the fighter, really nice engage, but the wall doesn't sweep him in, unfortunately, because of the CC layering coming out of there, but I don't think Fighter can get out of this one, Skimmy. I don't think so. He's got the entire team in hot pursuit looking to run him down, and in the end, it is Biper that finds his third kill of the game. And it might be his time to shine, might be his time to take over this game and show that he's had enough Wait. of trying to be the uh, Skana outplaying the Camille and that he can put this dog to rest. I think Shurifier might go in when he notices that the team is split. We see Violet, Violet on midway throwing the culling into Lemus, not finding damage that he needs to stick. So Shurifier got to feel confident to engage here, especially with the TP coming through. 
He'll be coming in as you highlight, so then Sien says it's time to get active, pops the ultimate, looks to try and find a key target to lock on down with that wither, goes on to Kevy, he's engaged for it, he's diminished for the meantime, Bio once again with that classic two-man slingshot into the let's bounce, the Herald's so close to falling on down, but it will be picked up by Kevy, and he's able to get away with this one, can they flash across the wall, they're already over committed to this one, and Bio with no passive, no luxury, he's picking up those blobs, but it's a losing battle, a dying one on that occasion, as Aladoran across the wall says, I can offer a little bit of support. Here's a heal, but the hex gates say even that spot is not safe. What an all out of Shurnfire, you know, finds the R flash onto so many members. Even though Violet committed the cleanse, unfortunately goes down to the enemies in the end. But you can see what happens when that wither goes on to, to these, uh, you know, auto attacking carries. Harry just wasn't able to do anything. But I think this was a really nice disengage from Bliss initially, doing a really good job to re engage onto Shurnfire. But unfortunately, he's just too strong, you know, doesn't die in time. Finds this huge curse of the sad mummy onto multiple members, which means that these people go down. Harry gets hit with the wither as his fight extends, and he just cannot do the return damage that he needs to. No, he can't summon the shoulders. Uh, can't really rally the might of the Sharima to get it done on this occasion. And it was just this very elongated trade where we were running down the numbers as low as humanly possible. 16 minutes into this one then. A very different turn of events. It's a 5k lead here for Grand Zero. They've managed, you know what? I need even more range because this Wither's too annoying. The Azir picks one up and suddenly we just Exodia. Oh, so you just outrange them completely. You're just killing them off <laughs> That's screen. it. You can't hit me if I can only hit you. <laughs> this Zerith meta. Just, just outrange your enemy so they can't see you. And they're like, well, try and counter this. Your champion is now invalid. And that, that would feel bad. That certainly would. But Tien is still opting for all of this uh, tankiness with the Frozen Heart being rushed. Oh, that went the full combo on towards Lemus. The bubble was good and the tidal wave is even better. So Lemus is just a sitting duck having burnt literally everything. There was nothing left to survive. Tower falls on the bot side whilst Nasus remains. He doesn't want to commit that TP, although it is up and available. But Fido will return to the lane whilst the rest of Bliss will scurry away. And to touch back on Grand Zero Shaft, like, I want to know who really cooked this. Like, was this a Ben V angle? Is this something they have practiced in scrims against this team specifically? Because I feel like Bliss wouldn't really notice what's coming. And, you know, Vila's dashing forward, but behind him is multiple members he doesn't want to be seeing. Oh, how's he managed to get away with this one? No, Fido's still on Hot Pursuit. Fantastic! Turn of events. A double kill going the way for him. The Corky is well and truly accelerated by this point already on that Trinity Force. And very much so now looking to add insult to injury and find yet another tower in this mid lane. Bio with the Let's Bounce active. No real damage to try and back him up, so hesitant to pop it at this stage. But still looking to jump on through and says, you know what, Tien, you're low enough. I can get it done. The Dawning Shadow from top lane, Fire. not enough for them to persevere through. But Shern is burning. And that is the key word, the Leandris is active, but it's not enough, and Kevy just gets enough HP returned that he's able to stand around a little bit longer and say, you know what, Harry, you deserve one. Find your first of the game. He's back in the game, Skivvy. This is a repeat of game one, but we've flipped sides. We see that Grand Zero absolutely dominated the early game, but now Bliss are the ones who keep winning these fights when they shouldn't be. So Kevy might be able to take back on the game. We see Bio going for the huge engage onto Fido. Oh my god, what a play, what a bubble, and then a fantastic Closing together with the slappy hands by the Zack and an ace. an ace. And what is it? What is it, Tally? Is red side just a comeback side? This is the story of what we saw last split skimmy. We saw our top two teams going against each other. Back then it was Grand Zero and Antic. And when they versed each other, whoever was winning early game would end up losing. So is this just a repeat of this split? We're going to see our top teams find these leads, overextend a bit too much, and get really punished by the fact that, you know, Bayer's a bit strong right now, and he's just constantly going for these engages. And I think that this is so lucky that Kenny was able to win this game, because he is now absolutely back in the game. Daddy most certainly is. If Bayer was to win this game, or if Bliss rather were to win this game, certainly my MVP try and really just put the team on his back and say, come on, boys, we're better than this. A double kill for Kevy, a kill for Harry, all the right members getting a little bit of gold to patch them back up. And I tell you what, you really can't call this one. I mean, as a viewer, you're just sitting there the entire time thinking, hold, just wait, let's see what happens next. We see Ground Zero walking in blind to the Team Bliss team. They could be on the Dragon, we don't know. We don't get to see either, but they engage on to Bio. Had to see what this is going to look like, Skippy. He's got the passive, and does he want to burn it? I'm sure he wants to hold on for it as long as possible. They do enough work to make sure that Bliss find three dragons back to back. They go. Kevy, the focus right now. The blobs are going to be falling, and he'll be the first one to go one down. The Empress divide to try and buy space, but there is the center route. But he's done just Baron's enough up. with a fancy feat to run away. But as you say, with no jungler for 30 seconds, surely it's an easy pickup of Baron. This is a very easy pickup for Ground Zero. Even though they just got Ace, the gold came back to an even state. So. 
Team Bliss pick up the dragon. They are now on the soul point. Baron will go over to ground zero, but how much actually will this go over to ground zero? They are turning straight away on the TP. Harry has flash. <laughs> There's no way Amy just does that. He comes in. He's what they're up to. He only has the flash available. There's the blast cone fighting across the wall right now. Looking to try Double and get out of range. One man bubble onto Kurek. The damage from the Baron is starting to hurt a little bit. No luxury of a war mox. Well, there is for Kurek. I tell a lie. So he can tank that one up and not really get punished. But in the end, look, Bliss will be happy. They stopped the Baron. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that Bliss should feel very lucky this was a Hextech Rift because they had enough time to be able to rotate to their dragon. But we see Fire sitting on the flank trying to go for the engage. Unfortunately, doesn't land the slappy hands onto Corky, which means he would have fallen down, has no flash. Fire himself, bit of extended, dies in the fight, releasing him once he can absorb as much damage as he can, but he can't get out. The amount of chase potential coming out of the back to back with his back to back, uh, you know, bandage tosses coming out of Shun Fire means you are not living. Well, it's just disgusting, really, isn't it? It's like a center route from afar. You've got two hooks to try and find you. If that's not enough, the women there to guarantee. And then if. By some miracle you've escaped or that, you've suddenly got a Valkyrie, just like a flying past aeroplane to take you down in the end. So Grand Zero's chase potential is simply unmatched at this point, but I think it's going to be a, an interesting dance around this Baron as to which team can get it done, because even when they've got a numbers advantage, it's uh, just not enough. Yeah, and we just got to, you know, take a breath now, Skimmy, because we're in a lull state. It shouldn't be anything happening for a bit. Take stock of the items in inventories. We aren't seeing many pen items kind of anyone right now. There's a lot of resistance sitting in the game. So I feel like these fights are gonna be very extended. They're gonna be very frontline heavy when we don't see, you know, the void staffs or the LDRs coming out of our 80 carries and mid laners. There should just be a lot of damage being absorbed by these frontlines, and I can't wait to see how these fights are gonna turn out. Let's see then which tank can look to soak up the most right now because the flash forward the three point strike locks in place. Kurek out goes the Empress of Fire, but doesn't do enough. I don't think it does because Schoen's fine access to the backline and two kills easily found by Grand Zero to break their deadlock here in the mid lane and to prevent Bliss from blinding really any stronghold back into this. And I think that might be a mistake by Bliss. Playing to engage with your comp might be a mistake, especially when you don't have vision of all members coming out of Grand Zero. Especially onto the Nautilus. He's so tanky. So I'll take that, but Bliss still want to take this fight, Skinny. But we certainly do. Fire doesn't have the passive this time. Going to be even easier to try and take on Dan. He's getting run down by the entire roster of Grand Zero. The bot lane. Or at least Violet and Harry are there to try and assist. But you see the wither. And Harry can't, I mean, Violet can't move. Forced to burn flash as well as cleanse. And even then, in range of Kurax hook. And this cop, this. This ability just to do as you please is so, so devious here. That chase threat is insane, Skimmy. Just, just with her, with her, with her. Not Hawk. So many different tools to be able to lock down opponents to overextend. And I think that's, you know, how these fights are really exploding for Ground Zero. One member, one frontline member overextends from Blizz, and all of a sudden they cannot get out of the fight. Well, they're going to be uh, relentless in their pursuit of hunting for more and more attacks towards this Baron. As long as we stop them, we are happy. Yeah, he needs to steal this. But how committed are Grand Zero? Do they want to go for the flip or do they just want to go for the turn? That's the turn that they're going for right now across the wall with the Curse of the Sad Mummy. A flash and a heal and a shield to get it done. The Azir perseveres. The Zinzal is back. lagging behind. And Bayer once again is saying, I'll oh, do it all on my own team. We have stopped the Baron. Now please run. Protect yourself. Crazen Guard will help. And out comes the culling now. We are really cycling through Hold every up, single corner and humanly available. Is Bliss doing enough? Are they going to find some kills? Members are low, but they're unable to confirm anything. The Hexgate channel is interrupted. And finally, it comes to an end. Can you explain to me how that turned out favorable for Bliss? We saw so many members <laughs> go down to one health. The fights are so extended. Ground Zero keep turning off the Baron. Bliss doing such a good job baiting. And these base gates are doing so much to mean that they come back on time. And we're going to see the same in reverse here. I, mean, I don't know if this is a good position for Bliss to be in right now. Surely has to be a turn angle from Bliss. There's no way they commit to this run, right? You can see Tien already active with the ultimate, looking for a key target. He's in. Oh, hang on a minute. I'm being surrounded by everybody. Aladog's so low. A single auto will get it done. It's exactly what Fido finds. The turn onto Harry. He can't get anything accomplished, even with the divide created by his ultimate. Double found by Tien. Their turn to go back towards the Baron. And I think this time, they're all dead. There is no defense. I will confidently say, Skimmy, this is now a Baron for Ground Zero. But the Purple Worm will be the downfall of Oceania. Stay away from this thing unless everyone is dead. It's too dangerous. We see back to back to back team fights coming out. Not knowing who's going to win, but eventually these base gates pay off. We go into the replay. 
they have their cooldowns back. They, there's just all these members grouped up, and there's so many engaged tools coming out of the ground zero side. We see, you know, Violet completely zoned by Fido here on the side. Alathoric has to try and escape from this fight, you know, when he takes all this AoE damage, but he's just a sitting duck for Fido to clean up on the side here. Yeah, you saw him losing to Baron, cops the entire ult there from the center. And then really in a rough spot, do I want to die to the, uh, you know, PV mechanic, or do I want to try and take a gamble and hope that Fido is caught sleeping at the wheel? That's obviously not the case, because he is incredibly fed right now as the Corky. Three items done, i.e. Tr uh, Trinity Force as well as the Rapid Fire Cannon is. The correct says, you know what, I am the star of the show. Flash across the wall, find a hook. Doesn't materialize into anything, but this is Blizz hunting for at least something in a Dragon Soul. Blizz do not have the power in the inventory to contest right now, but this is soul point for them. If Kevy steals this, this could be lights out for Ground Zero. This could mean everything, and first of all, they pop the passive on by Panther. Kevy is dead, there is no smite still available. Down for 40 seconds, there is no protection to afford their bruises. Their front line is completely gone. Harry with the massive Empress Divide saying, you shall not pass, and the three members can survive. But the game is getting worse and worse and worse. And 26 minutes in, we are very close to a 10k lead. Yes, this was a very close game for a long time, Skimmy. It was quite even in the notorious. It would have been like one or two, one to 1.5k gold lead for certain individuals. But now we're seeing huge item leads in the inventory, especially in mid lane. Fido's picked up his three items. This is when we always talk about Corky coming online. Those critted sheen procs are going to do so much damage, especially paired with the uh, you know the ammunitions from Corky. The passive allows them to do true damage. See Kurek there hovering and wondering, do I need to go for a flash across the wall? Shows a bit of restraint, says, you know what, we'll settle for the tower. That in its own is enough for us. And six turrets to three now. It is a bit of a whitewash in that regard. We're running back towards this dragon fight because it's desperation from Blitz. Yeah, this is absolutely desperation. They're trying to get this dragon into the smile from Super Kevy, but unfortunately, a lot of the AoE coming out of the Blitz side cannot reach the dragon because of how strong these frontliners are. There's only so much damage to TM just walk up, not even hit anyone, just, you know, throw an E, throw a Wither. His job has been done. They have to disengage. They cannot deal with how strong this frontline is, especially with the amount of DPS coming out of the center and coming out of the Corky. What a series, if nothing more, for both of these teams to digest. And I'm sure Antic sitting on the sidelines watching this going, what is happening right now? Whether or not they were uh, exposed to this in their own scrim sets, you have to wonder. But surely it's uh, it's an entertaining uh, you know, uh, stage performance regardless of the outcome. It certainly is uh, working its way towards that perfect 2-0 with Grand Zero looking to claim all three points here. Unless there are any more tricks left up the sleeve here for Bliss to try and fight back as they're basically being crowded to hide inside their base. So we see the Infinity Edge finished by Violet. They're going forward onto TN. His flash is almost off cooldown. Violet is just losing <laughs> to the AoE coming out of the ground. Zero side, the, the global <laughs> threats. You know, he's sitting in a spirit fire with the center hold. He takes more damage than he dealt to TN. We still don't see the, the last whisper coming out of them yet. No Lord Dominic's finisher. He just doesn't do the damage he needs to right now. They need more time to scale. Yet Harry's almost finished his, uh, you know, Crypt Bloom to get some penetration to deal with the Mad Magic just coming out the Ground Zero side. But I don't know if they have enough time, Skinny. It is uh, a dying situation. They're going to try and do something about it. Zach overshoots the Slingshot, unable to find the target. He's after and may just simply perish as a result. Yeah, completely stun locked. The CC is unbearable. Harry losing the 1v1 to a jungle of all people. Forced to burn the ultimate. Kevy flashing for his life. The Crescent Guard active and giving protection to his team. The cleanse is there, but Fire is just peppering the members, but no kills getting confirmed. They'll lose two inhibitors. They'll lose two teammates, and they might lose two games. And then we see peak Nasus mechanics coming out at the end there. Flash with the onto Violet, which means he has to blow cleanse. And he doesn't feel safe in these team fights going forward now. We have to see if the cleanse is going to come up for this next team fight, because if it's not, Shern has Flash, and this could mean Violet will fall down first in this next team fight. Well, let's take a stock. Uh, we'll take a breath, I should say, um, to take a quick stock check of what's up and available work. on the map for these two teams. Oh, maybe not. Let's just not. Let's just continue to uh, fight fire with fire. I was going to say two minutes before the next major objective. There's another chance for the Baron. Perhaps uh, have a chance to blister salvage the uh, Dragon Soul for themselves. But look, I think they're so hard pressed to escape their base right now. If you take a quick stock check of the mini map, look how much vision favors that are Grand Zero. I think anywhere Bliss go, they're tracked. Yeah, absolutely. There's just, <laughs> it's lights out for Bliss pretty much. Their only vision is just really, really deep. They don't want to be playing for TP blanks, and we see if Grand Zero is going to just absolutely close this heart right now through the Azir damage. Well, that's exactly what they're hoping for right now. Tien is just literally laughing at the culling. It says it doesn't do anything. It tickles me. That feels nice. It's a bit of a massage at the stage of the game. Shern jumps in. One and ultimate, not to be enough. 
even with the cleanse up and available. Double kill is there, found Where's fantastic the damage? by Corky. But he's a little bit too good so far. Lemus answers back with another kill, and the triple is found by the Corky. And that might be lights out, job done, GG. And certainly does look a little bit uh, easy for GZ as they will get it done dead on the 30 minute mark with a very creative draft with some fantastically unique picks and an ace to end uh, day two. Yeah, and you say it yourself, Skimmy, a very creative draft. I think it's so cool to see these picks come out, the Nasus and the Moon Poo. This looks so unplayable for, for Bliss. I, I don't think they played too bad themselves, but they just didn't have the damage all the way to navigate these fights when there's just a Nasus in front of you and the Moon Moon in front of you who's just absorbing all your damage. No penetration items coming out of the carries from Bliss meant that this frontline was unkillable. That it certainly was, and I'm sure it's a very awe-inspiring performance from the Grand Zero side, right? To start off that series so far behind,